It's got from MyGrowthRings.com. Here, here happens to be my basement because I filmed a video in my sister's basement yesterday, and for some reason, it has no audio. So we're going to record a voiceover here. Now, this video is in response to the video I posted most recently on set screws. And I mentioned a specific set screw on the headstock of the Mark V that you probably don't want to mess with. Well, several people commented that they need to mess with it. In fact, a gentleman named Ken over on the uh, Shopsmith Owners Group on Facebook even shared a picture. And that picture showed misalignment of the, uh, the depth stop. And he wanted to know, well, what should he do? Well, he's got to mess with that screw. So let's check this out. So as you can see here, the alignment mark that's off to around 11 o'clock should be at 12 o'clock. And to get that adjusted, he's going to have to remove the putty from on top of that, the, the kind of light gray putty, um, and loosen a set screw. But before he does that, it's really important that you remove the tension from the spring. If you loosen that set screw, there is a very large spring that's going to snap back. Now, I've already got the putty out of mine, or in my case, it had lead. Uh, so you remove it by, you know, use a scratch awl or even a screw to pop out the lead sinker or to remove if there's putty from the set screw to get that out of there. So you do that just the same way in both locations. Again, if I were to loosen that set screw, though, that spring is going to come snapping back, and we don't want that to happen. This is the spring that returns your quill when you extend it and let go of the handle. Watch, it snaps right back, and uh, that's got a lot, a lot of pressure on it. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to kind of take this apart and show you some of the pieces and parts. First, we have the feed stop handle, or knob as I often call it. Next on that shaft is a special washer. That washer on the inside has a little bit of a tongue, and on one face has got a knurled or, I don't know, abrasive face. That knurled side should be facing our depth gauge dial. Um, if you've ever noticed that when you go to tighten your, your, uh, your feed stop handle that it kind of grinds, your washer's probably on backwards. And if your washer's on backwards, you probably also notice that your depth gauge moves while you're drilling. So anyway, we want to make sure that's facing the right way. Next, we have that depth gauge dial. And on the back side, you'll see there's a stop integrated into it. And that stop is going to impact a very similar stop that's built into that spring barrel. You can see I'm just kind of slamming it against there. Made a great sound on the video. It's a shame you're missing it. <laughs> Anyway, um, and then there's uh, a, another of those special washers that has the neural face. Now, in this case, the knurled face is facing out so that those two knurled faces are sandwiching the depth gauge dial. All right, so we need to get that spring power off of there. And so we're going to do that first by, uh, by removing the quill. This now, we want to be sure that we take the quill out. We do that by loosening, and I'm actually going to remove this set screw on top of the headstock. And uh, you'll see here, it's one of the special screws that's on this headstock. And uh, this, this one has a very specific length, but more importantly, look at the tip on that. It's kind of a squared tip. And that's going to run inside of a keyway or a slot that's on the top of the quill. And that keeps that quill body from rotating. It also stops it from coming all the way out. Notice, as I advance the quill, it actually disconnects from a pinion inside of the headstock. So I'm going to hold that handle firmly as I wiggle and jiggle the quill out, setting that aside. Now, be careful with the handle. You've got a ton of spring tension on there right now. And you're going to want to slowly wind that back in. There we go. I realize I forgot to film something, so in our follow-up, I'll have to show you how all that goes back in. Now, if all I wanted to do was to align these two points, I can do that simply by loosening the set screw, rotating that, that spring drum, and then tightening everything in place. But maybe the reason why you're here is because you actually need to replace the spring. The spring has broken. So to do that, we're going to take off the components on the other side, starting with the quill feed handle. Then we get that quill feed lock off of there. Um, underneath there, you may not have noticed that you have a spring washer, special spring washer, and something called the quill feed sleeve. You notice I'm having to kind of pull on that shaft a little bit to get that to come loose. It has a key slot of its own, 
And we'll see in a moment that there is a special kind of key mounted on that shaft. Now, before we remove this, <laughs> inside the headstock, there's something that's going to fall down in and get lost among the motor. Uh, it's a special washer that we'll see in a moment out of the headstock. And there's that sleeve that I removed. I put it back in to film this. And then those, when you tighten your quill lock, are pressing against two little lobes in the casting. This is why it's really important you never lock the uh, depth lock or the, uh, the quill lock with the quill out of place. Now, I've pulled the sleeve out. And then before I pull the shaft completely out of the headstock, I got my hand up inside there catching that washer. And I have to feed it around the little key that's in there. And here we go. So there's the washer. It's got a very special shape to it. It's kind of a, a conical shape or a cone shape. That's not right. It's, a <laughs> it's got a concave and a convex side. And it's important that you face it the correct direction. The, uh, the convex side faces that quill feed sleeve, faces out. The concave side f uh, faces the little, um, the little <laughs> faces inside the headstock. All right, there's that keyway I was talking about, that key. That is something called a Woodruff key. You can buy these at hardware stores or straight from ShopSmith. They always remind me of a trip to Taco Bell, which is kind of cool. All right, so back to the other side. If I am going to take this apart in order to replace the spring, I have to take off a uh, retaining ring or a snap ring. And uh, these are, again, very common parts. You do, do need a snap ring plier, and with my professionalism, I was able to remove that easily. It has to expand far enough to slide it past the threads. At this point, again, kind of loosening everything, we can pull that all straight out of the headstock. All right, at this point, I'm mentioning the fact that uh, I'm not going to handle the replacement of the spring in this video. There are a couple other channels that I can, I can direct you to that is going to give you good content about replacing the spring. So I will link to those in the shop notes or the video description. And uh, I look forward to your questions, comments, and cheap shots in the midweek follow-up. That's it. Make it a great day.